Your Bible describes a place called Armageddon. Many think of Armageddon as the place and time of the ultimate destruction of mankind and planet Earth. Will we soon face the ultimate battle between the forces of good and evil? What does Bible prophecy say? Is Armageddon coming? And what will happen after Armageddon? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World presents Roderick C. Meredith, Richard Ames, John O'Gwen, bringing you the good news of your future in Tomorrow's World. This week, Richard Ames explores... Armageddon in Prophecy. And now, Richard Ames. Greetings to all our friends around the world. Many of us have fears that the world will come to an end in a nuclear holocaust. I personally had those fears back in 1959, when the United States and the Soviet Union were potentially headed toward nuclear war. Will we yet face a nuclear World War III? Will Armageddon come? On today's program, we'll see what the Bible says about Armageddon in prophecy. Fears of Armageddon have been especially strong for the last 50 or 60 years, ever since the nuclear age began at the end of World War II. These fears have been played out in popular movies. The Day After Tomorrow depicted our planet thrust into nuclear winter. Movies such as Deep Impact and Armageddon showed the effect of a major asteroid striking the Earth. Often, fears of Armageddon involve warlike mankind stumbling into a planet-wide nuclear war, leading to cosmocide. In the Cold War era science fiction movie, World Without End, one character describes Armageddon as, quote, the slaughter of humanity, an atomic war no one wanted, but no one had the wisdom to avoid. My friends, atomic war is not just a fear, it is a world-changing reality. In the mid-1950s, the horror of nuclear disaster was fresh on our minds. It was on August 6th and August 9th of 1945 that the United States dropped the first ever atomic bombs on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. A new era of mass destruction had begun. In 1989, when the Berlin Wall came down, Many in the West felt vindicated, thinking that the world would become a safer place with values of capitalism and democracy prevailing over communism. Some said that mankind had reached the end of history with the triumph of liberal democracy. The United States and many other nations were shocked back to reality by the tragic events of September 11, 2001. Major terrorist acts on American shores proved to Americans and to the world that our planet remains a dangerous place. What would it be like for your city to be the target of a one megaton nuclear bomb? A megaton is equivalent to one million tons of TNT. And a one megaton bomb would be five to ten times more explosive than the terrifying atomic bombs that exploded on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In addition to the blast wave, the powerful pulse of heat radiation and intense pulse of x-rays, the nuclear explosion triggers powerful firestorms. How many people would be killed by just one bomb? Dr. Alan F. Phillips describes it this way, quote, The estimates for a city of one million or two million struck by a single one megaton bomb are that around one-third of the inhabitants would be killed instantly or fatally injured, one-third seriously injured, and the rest uninjured or only slightly injured. That number of injured, if they could be distributed throughout the hospitals of North America, would occupy something like a third of the total number of beds. And, of course, no hospital can deal adequately with such an influx of urgent cases within a few days. End of quote. The doomsday clock posted by the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists reflects the danger of living in the nuclear age. On February 27, 2002, 
the minute hand of the clock was moved to seven minutes before midnight. This was the third time since 1991 that the clock has moved forward. The Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists cited factors including, quote, too little progress on nuclear disarmament, growing concerns about the security of nuclear weapons materials worldwide, the continuing U.S. preference for unilateral action rather than cooperative international diplomacy, terrorist efforts to acquire and use nuclear and biological weapons, and the growing inequality between rich and poor around the world that increases the potential for violence and war, end of quote. We all want to avoid violence and war. Mankind continues to seek the way to peace, but without acknowledgement of the Creator God and His supreme rulership over the earth, nations will totally fail. Your Bible explains the cause of war. If you have a Bible, turn to Romans 3 and verse 15. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 3 and verse 15, Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. The warring nature of humans is predictable. Jesus prophesied of the dangerous times in which we live. Turn in your Bible to Matthew 24. You should have this scripture marked in your Bible. Matthew 24, verse 21. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Jesus was not speaking of spiritual salvation here. He was speaking of the prospect of human annihilation, of cosmicide, death of all life on planet Earth. My friends, we need to be spiritually awake. September 11, 2001 should have given us a spiritual wake-up call. But much of the Western world is still indulging in escapism and selfish pleasures. They're ignoring the dangers looming on the horizon and the ultimate tribulation spoken of by Jesus. In recent years, writers and commentators have often described not just nuclear and chemical dangers, but also the ravages of earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, and military devastation as apocalyptic. This terminology draws on the imagery and prophesied turmoil outlined in your book of Revelation. Now turn to the last book in your Bible, the Apocalypse or the book of Revelation. The 16th chapter of Revelation locates the gathering place for the greatest battle in all history, Revelation 16 and verse 14. Here the kings of the earth and of the whole world are gathered together for what? Read what it says. They are preparing for the battle of the great day of God Almighty. The actual battle is not called the battle of Armageddon, although that's the common terminology. It's the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now where do the armies of all the nations gather? Revelation 16 and verse 16. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Just what is Armageddon? The word Armageddon is a transliteration of the original Hebrew Har Megiddo, which means the hill of Megiddo or the mountain of Megiddo. How will Armageddon figure into end time prophecy? The answer lies in knowing the prophetic framework outlined in the book of Revelation and in the Olivet Prophecy we've discussed in previous programs. To help you in your study of Bible prophecy, I'd like to offer you our free informative booklet, The Middle East and Prophecy. What does Bible prophecy say about the future of Israel and the nation surrounding it? Will there be peace in Jerusalem and the Middle East? You need to be watching the Middle East and the trends that will mean major changes in political and religious control over the nations of the Middle East and the city of Jerusalem. What events will mark those changes? Who will eventually control Jerusalem? What events will lead up to Armageddon? The Middle East and prophecy will answer those questions, and it will help you in your study of Bible prophecy. You need this booklet, so pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of The Middle East in Prophecy.
This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. In the first part of our program, we saw that mankind is bringing the world to the edge of destruction. And we saw that the nations will gather at Megiddo, or Armageddon, for the battle of that great day of God Almighty. With all the historic battles that have taken place at Megiddo, the word Armageddon has come to symbolize any large-scale destructive and decisive battle. Is there any danger today of nuclear war? Certainly many of us remember the historic conflicts that were very frightening. In 1962, the United States and the Soviet Union played nuclear brinkmanship over the Cuban Missile Crisis. In 1973, President Nixon placed U.S. military forces on nuclear alert when the Soviet Union threatened to intervene in the Middle East war between Israel and its Arab neighbors. And man's inhumanity to man has not ceased. The 20th century saw as many as 50 million people executed under the communist regime of Mao Zedong. More than 30 million are estimated to have died in Mao's great leap forward between 1958 and 1961 alone. More than 20 million were killed in the Soviet Union under Joseph Stalin. Massive killings and genocide remain a problem to this day. According to Newsweek magazine, quote, the genocide convention outlawed acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. Post-war atrocities include Cambodia, one million dead, 500,000 displaced. Rwanda, one million dead, 3.5 million displaced. Bosnia, 300,000 dead, two million displaced, end of quote. As we can see, mankind is certainly capable of the great destruction that Armageddon represents and the threat of global terrorism continues. But where does the biblical Armageddon fit into the panorama of prophecy? Regular viewers of Tomorrow's World are acquainted with the prophetic outline revealed in the book of Revelation. Turn in your Bible to the book of Revelation, the sixth chapter. Here the Apostle John sees in vision the famous four horsemen of the apocalypse. They symbolize in order false Christs and false religion war and its devastating effects, famines that normally follow on the heels of war, and pestilences and disease that follow after famine. The Apostle John writes in Revelation 6 and verse 8, So I looked, and behold a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Even the genocide we've seen since the end of World War II will pale into comparison to the death that will cover the earth. Billions of human beings on earth will die as war, hunger, and disease expand over the planet. Yes, we are facing dangers of human annihilation. The fourth seal of Revelation, or the fourth horseman of the apocalypse, will result in massive deaths of men, women, and children. The fifth seal, as you read in Revelation 6, verse 9, reveals a martyrdom of Christians during the tribulation period of about two and one-half years. Then we read about the sixth seal, which introduces the day of the Lord, the time of God's wrath and judgment on the nations. The sixth seal is referred to as the heavenly signs. Revelation 6 and verse 12. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, 
as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. God will get the attention of every human being on earth. He then seals his servants to protect them through the day of the Lord, the year of God's judgment on the nations. Next, Christ opens the seventh seal of Revelation, which consists of seven trumpet plagues. The first four include great ecological upheaval and devastation, as you read in chapter 9. The Apostle John describes in first century language the modern warfare that he sees in vision. Revelation 9 and verse 7. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had as a king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. John is describing the early phases of World War III. Apollyon and Abaddon mean destroyer. The power behind this military force is that of a great spirit being described in Revelation 12:9 as the serpent, Satan, the devil. Yes, Satan is the great destroyer. What happens next? The sixth angel sounds a trumpet, introducing a counterattack from a massive eastern army. We've already seen that the pale horseman, the fourth horseman of the apocalypse, destroyed billions of humans. Now we find even more killing on a global scale. Revelation 9 and verse 16. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. Here are descriptions similar to nuclear explosions. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed. By the fire, and the smoke, and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. One third of mankind is destroyed. After the massive loss of life under the fourth horseman, now we see about another two billion or more killed in World War III. The Apostle John continues with his description in Revelation 9 and verse 19. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents, having heads, and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who are not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. These battles will produce massive destruction and loss of life. God will then step in to save mankind from total annihilation. Mankind has tried various strategies to save himself. Nothing has prevented war. Nothing has cured mankind's warlike nature. When mankind has tried everything, and its failure puts the earth at the very brink of destruction, God himself will step in to save mankind. Revelation 11, verse 15. The seventh trumpet sounds announcing a new world ruling government under the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. Revelation 11, and verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That's the good news, the gospel that this sorry world so desperately needs. It's the only solution to this world's problems. I hope you come to yearn for a new world to come, tomorrow's world, ruled by Jesus Christ and the immortalized saints of God. My friends, now is the time to turn your life around and be a part of that coming kingdom. 
I urge you to read your Bible, to get down on your knees before your Creator, the God who loves you. He wants you to avoid the human rebellion we've read about. Thank God that His kingdom is coming. Yes, the kingdom of God will stand forever. The book of Revelation assures us that there will be peace on earth. It promises a universe of joy and glory. And you can be a part of that awesome future. But in the meantime, you need to know the prophetic events that lead up to Armageddon and beyond. To help you in your study of Bible prophecy, I'd like to offer you our exciting free booklet, The Middle East and Prophecy. What does Bible prophecy say about the future of Israel and the nation surrounding it? What trends and events should you be watching? Let me share with you a few of the subheads of the booklet. Who will control Jerusalem? Watch for the abomination of desolation. The king of the north invades the Middle East. The final phases of World War III. This exciting booklet will help you in your study of Bible prophecy and give you advanced information on end-time events leading up to World War III and Armageddon. You need this booklet. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of The Middle East in Prophecy. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800. Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. In the last part of our program, we saw the exciting good news in Revelation 11:15 that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, is coming back to save humanity from self-destruction. But amazingly, the nations will want to fight the conquering king of heaven's armies. Satan's demons, fallen angels, gather those armies that were about to annihilate one another and all life on earth. These opposing forces now join one another to fight against Christ at His coming. They gather at Megiddo, but they move southward to Jerusalem to fight Christ there. Notice Joel 3 and verse 1. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there. The Valley of Jehoshaphat is between the Mount of Olives and the city of Jerusalem. It is also known as the Kidron Valley, which extends southward for some distance. Yes, the battle of the great day of God Almighty will take place at Jerusalem. Jehoshaphat means judgment of the eternal. God will judge the nations in this climactic battle. The European superpower called the beast in the book of Revelation will also be judged at that time and punished. The armies of planet Earth, the personification of evil, attempt to fight Christ at His coming. Revelation 19 and verse 19. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth and their armies, gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Armageddon is coming. God will judge rebellious nations who will even fight against the Prince of Peace. Today we live in dangerous times. Rogue nations are developing nuclear weapons. Terrorists threaten us with weapons of mass destruction. As the Apostle Paul stated in Romans 3.17, The way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. 
When men turn to war and do not fear God, what happens? At the end of World War II, General Douglas MacArthur summarized the historic lesson of war. Quote, Military alliances, balances of power, leagues of nations all in turn failed, leaving the only path to be the way of the crucible of war. The utter destructiveness of war now blocks out this alternative. We have had our last chance. If we will not devise some greater and more equitable system, our Armageddon will be at our door. The problem basically is theological and involves a spiritual recrudescence and improvement of human character that will synchronize with our almost matchless advances in science, art, literature, and all material and cultural developments of the past 2,000 years. It must be of the spirit if we are to save the flesh. Can we, human beings, you and I, save the flesh? No, we cannot. Jesus said that unless he intervenes, there would no flesh be saved alive, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. My friends, you can be protected through the dangerous times ahead. Jesus tells us in Luke 21 and verse 36, Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. I hope you're praying for God's kingdom to come. I hope you're praying for the return of the King of Kings to this earth. Now is the time to prepare spiritually. Now is the time to repent and change your life. Seek God in prayer. Read your Bible. And look forward to a world under the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, when all nations will learn to live by the Bible, the law of God, the government God, and the love of God. You need to know the framework of Bible prophecy and what lies ahead. Be sure to request your free exciting booklet, The Middle East in Prophecy. It will help you understand the future, and it will help you prepare for the days ahead. You can be prepared through our Savior, Jesus Christ. We invite you to join us every week on the Tomorrow's World program. You need to know what the Bible reveals about the future. Roderick Meredith, John O'Gwyn, and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ and the exciting end-time prophecies and their meaning. So join us again next week right here at the same time. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. All the literature offered on today's program can be ordered absolutely free off our website at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.